Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. I'd like to do a review today of Festool's MFT system. Now, this table here that's behind me is an MFT 1080. It's an older model that's been since discontinued, uh, along with its smaller cousin, the MFT 800. But there are still very viable tables if you can get a hold of these older ones. But also, they've been replaced by the MFT 3. Now, several of the things I'm going to talk about, the benefits of using this table are all completely valid for the MFT3 and I'll try to point out some of the model differences along the way uh, in case you're, you're curious what makes this a little different from the newer ones. Now as a tabletop of course it's just got dog holes all across the top. The dog holes themselves are 20 millimeter dogs so this is a different standard than what we're used to. In North America we typically use quarter inch dogs like this little set of low profile rocklers that I've got now you can use these, of course, but you're going to get, you know, it's going to, it's going to have some play. Actually, quite a bit of play. You wouldn't want to use this if you're trying to hold the board steady for sanding unless you really pinned it against that. But you can get 20 millimeter dogs, and some of those actually come from Festool naturally. And there are actually a number of different vendors that do sell 20, 20 millimeter dogs. So if you look around a little bit, you'll find them. Now. <clears throat> This, these are actually part of a clamping element system that Festool has that I'll show you in a moment. And these have 20 millimeter holes in them, so when these go in, it's pretty much zero play. So that's really nice. Now there also are some dogs that come from uh, Quaz, Quaz dogs, Quaz products rather. These are also going to have zero play. So they're out there, and I'm actually going to be covering these in the separate video about calibration and third party tools. So you might want to give that a look. Now the layout of this table besides the holes is uh, there's normally a fence in the back with a miter gauge. Now mine has been heavily modified. This is the one that you would have originally gotten with this table and it's uh, similar to what you would get for the MFT3. The MFT3 has a much more robust miter gauge for setting angles and uh, it's a little easier to set. This one here honestly was a little bit clumsy to set because you had to set the angle and lock it down to the side of the table. It was I, I tried it once for fun and that was it. <laughs> so this would normally attach to your table with these uh, knobs here underneath through the table. It would place itself back here in the, in the back set of holes and then this guide rail flips down over top of it. So this is a fence that you would normally use. This fence here is the, is the same one. Now, uh, the fence system itself, we talk about it, normally it doesn't have a tape. That's also something I'm going to cover in my video because I do this tape in a, in a special way for recalibration. But it's normally, it has no tape. It has these little flag stops on them. So it's just a little flag that'll come down so you can butt in some wood up to it. Okay, pretend this piece of MDF is wood. <laughs> so it could butt up against there for repeated cuts. Now. I keep saying cuts, but I haven't discussed where I'd be cutting on this tabletop. This tabletop is a sacrificial top, so you can see that there's, there's a curve mark here that I've made from repeated cross cuts. Uh, some people have just completely decimated tables, just curves everywhere. Uh, so the idea is that you're just going to place, you're going to place some stock down on this table, and you're either going to cut with the integrated guide rail that I'll discuss in a moment, or you might just take one of your other guide rails and just slap that on there and make arbitrary cuts using the bottom media as a cutting surface. For doing these cuts that I mentioned about the cross cut, there is a unit here in the front. Let me uh, remove this so you can see it. So this unit here, what it has is it has just a cam lock on it and then a little riser. Now the riser has a nub. The nub fits into the track, the T-track that's on the bottom, or sorry, not a T-track, but just the groove that's on the bottom of your guide rail. This sets the height that the rail is going to be because you want the rail sitting on top of the stock. Let me go ahead and put this in. It slides in very easily because there's a T-track on the side of the table. There are also T-tracks on the top. Now the MFT 1080 and the 800, the older discontinued models, had these T-tracks on the top. The newer models have a V-groove and that's for different types of accessories. So that's just a difference to, to note. But either way, the guide rail is sort of front pin fits in the front. There's a stop that comes with the table. You set it there so at least you can repeatedly put it there and you just tighten it down. Now in my case I routinely take this off because otherwise I'll be in here with my favorite shorts and I'll walk by and it'll grab it and they won't be my favorite shorts anymore. They'll be a misdemeanor. So <clears throat> now 
the uh, guide rail, there's a similar pivot to this on the back. So you would normally place stock, place it up against your fence, drop the guide rail down, raise this up until it sits into the, into the raised portion of your track, and lock it down. Now, you would be able to place your saw. In my case, it's a 75. There's a 55 would actually be a little bit more convenient on this tabletop. But then you can place the saw on here and make your cut. There is no fence behind here, so you're not going to have to worry about cutting through that fence. You just cut all day long on this, and it makes beautiful cuts. Now, the cross-cut capacity of the original models, the 800 and the, uh, well, at least the 1080, is 24 and a half inches if you go all the way to the absolute end because the fence was inset a little bit. My fence is modified and I'm able to do 27 and a half and I'll describe that in that other video. The MFT 1080, uh, sorry, the MFT 3 uh, sits in between the two of those for capacity. So it's nice that you're able to use, like on a table saw, you normally only have about 10 inches in front of the blade. So if you were to try to do a cross cut, say, of material that's 25 inches wide, you're going to probably have to set up an extension onto your fence so that you can get good registration. And uh, it's honestly going to be an awkward cut to do. TS-75 or 55 work great on this table, but you're not limited to that by any means. If we were to look at the 1400 or any of the routers that have the guide stops here, let me scoot this over a little bit and you'll be able to see this more. I've made a line here. So there's a, a line here of where I'd like to route, say, a dado. I don't actually have a bit in here, but I'll just show you how it would work. You can very easily place this on there. Now, how am I going to get the position? Well, for one thing, I put it way too far out. <laughs> you would want to get that close, and then there's a, a little indentation here that indicates the center of the bit. You're going to line that up with the, with the uh, line that you made, and you can just go ahead and plow dados. Now, you could do dados, or you could do, of course, uh, sliding dovetail sockets. And for me, I've used it several times in that case there, and it's just amazing to go up and down the side of a cabinet and lay out sliding dovetails that you're going to use for your drawer, uh, for your shelves to go block into. It's so easy to do on this table and repeatable. Festool has a number of the different clamps. There are some of the long clamps. There are also some quick set clamps. And then there are some smaller and shorter clamps. Now, when I bought my table, these were the only ones available. To, uh, and then these ones here are a little bit faster action. Then we'll get into some of the specialty clamps, like these ones right here. These are called the clamping elements. Now, the way all these clamps work is very easy. You just take the, the clamp itself, drop it into the hole, and zip it up. Very easy to do. Then you would drop this down on your material. So if I had this piece of MDF again, just slide it down and clamp it into place. Now, <clears throat> personally, I prefer these shorter ones to the longer ones. I get a couple longer ones just in case, but use the shorter ones, otherwise your table starts to look like a porcupine and it can get a little bit awkward when you're in and around the table. These uh, other clamps, the quick clamps, are just a little bit faster to, a little bit faster to set up. I drop that in there drop it down and then you just cam action the thing back and it has a ratchet in the front that locks and then to release it you just pull it out backwards of what you did now to just to be sure these are not one-handed clamps if there's a way to do this one-handed I'd love to see a video on it uh, you still have to put it in the table and of course you're gonna want to grab this while you lower that down to do the lock okay so it's not at all like say one of these clamps here that you can pretty much do a lot one-handed. Let's say you wanted to sand this lovely piece of ply. Well, if I had this clamp holding it down so that it doesn't move around, I can't sand here. So I'm going to be limited by what I can do. You really want to be able to hold this from the sides. So that's exactly what you can do with the clamping elements, along with so many other things. Let's say we've uh, got our Festool Stein here, and we want to be able to hold it in place. This would be a very awkward item to hold in place before you go to sand it. Actually, it's a pretty weird thing to sand, but let's just uh, ignore that for the moment. So we can put these. These are the dogs that work with the clamping elements. You would pop these into a hole, and, if, and you can put the, the surface clamp here, and it'll slide towards the clamp, and then as you squeeze the clamp cam action, 
it'll squeeze the item in place. The benefit is that these rotate in the hole, as do these. So you can angle, you can put things that are on an angle very easily. So if for some reason we had a round item like this, you could very easily put two of the dogs there. There you go. Don't want to squeeze too tight. Don't know how strong that ceramic is. So <clears throat> these are exceptionally useful clamps. They're a little on the pricey side. I highly recommend that you get one pack though. At least get yourself one pack and you can use it for so many other things as well. Now one of, the, one of the common uses I use it for, if I remember doing any banding on plywood, I can put the ply conveniently here and clamp it in place. Now it's really easy for me to get at the top for doing some banding, for putting the glue on the top, or if I'm doing some connections, say with dominoes, and I have the domino holes here, it's kind of nice to be able to hold this thing up vertically very conveniently and drop glue and the dominoes into place while I connect my other portion. So I find them exceptionally These useful. clamps do work on the side of the tables. And that is still available on the MFT3. Now oftentimes what I've done with this is, and I don't have a, a sample here to show you very conveniently, I actually have some, just some milk crates here on the floor that are on wheels. I use them for just throwing my offcuts in, but it's great that the plastic surface doesn't mar things very easily. So I'll put, I'll stand a drawer up on the side of that up against the side of this bench and then I'll clamp it into place and then with that I'm able to do some simple planing of the top or sanding of the top, shaping, whatever. So that comes in very convenient. Okay, so we know that we can put clamps in on the side pretty easily and of course this is just a T-track. You can attach about anything. What I have back here is I've taken a block of wood, I made two holes through it and I put some square nuts on it that fit inside the T-track very conveniently with a star nut on the back, a star screw. So with that I've attached this simple lamp, task lamp, that I can pivot around. So it's nice that I can attach it to the side of the table very easily and remove it very easily. And I happen to use this actually quite often when I'm sanding. I'll lower it down and I'll actually turn off the lights in the shop. So I'm only sanding with this as a raking light and it actually shows everything. Now the MFT3 is a taller table than the 1080s were. The 1080s were about three and a half inches shorter than the uh, than the MFT3s. So a lot of people have actually raised their 1080s. I think that's why they, they bothered to change that. Now this table, as you can see, it does have some short stubby legs. The intention is that there's normally a set of legs on the underside of the table. And here's one of them because I use mine in my shop. I don't actually need the legs very often. They do attach very quickly because they just have these big nuts on them. And they fold underneath the table. So if you are doing any on-site work, it's very convenient to just fold them underneath, lock them into place, and then you can go and then, of course, set up wherever you want. It's a reasonably sturdy surface. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to do hand planing all day long on that surface. It's going to wiggle. But what's another nice setting is these with the little short stubby legs that have uh, the rubber pads on the bottom, is that with the legs folded up underneath, you're able to place this on, say, an outdoor picnic table, or on the back of your truck, or even on the ground on a driveway, and you're going to have clearance to be able to reach underneath and do your work without being completely on the ground. So it's a really nice feature of this table, and I've taken advantage of that here to stand it up on basically a short tabletop that just has legs that come up. Now, if you're curious about how this goes, I'll describe that more in my video on the modifications that I've made to my table. So I think that's about it for the tour. Right, thank you. We'll catch you on the second video.